everyone, it's me, Sabrina. I hope you all are having a great day. And today's episode six of me reading This Is Not The Abby Show. Enjoy. 16. A grown-up has never apologized to me. Never. I read Beth's emails five times. I have no idea why she trusts me, Labby Abby, with keeping her secret, but I won't tell, not for a million dollars. A grown-up has never apologized to me. Never. Mom's fork is poised in mid-air as she watches me stare at my dinner. You're miles away. Huh? Oh, nothing. I push my chicken around. Dad makes a face at the mystery mound on his plate. For Pete's sake, Rachel, what is this dirt? It's quinoa, Mom answers. Five Weight Watchers points. Dad cocks his head toward Drew and me, enjoying our mashed potatoes. How come they don't have to eat this? They need calories, we don't. She forks quinoa into her mouth. Eat your chicken, Abby. How's summer school? Exhilarating, a dream come true. I love it, thank you so much. What about day camp? Dad asks Drew. Film camp, Drew corrects him. Today we made blood from corn syrup and food coloring. We're shooting the stabbing scene tomorrow. How delightful, Mom says. Make any new friends? Yes, he answers. I know it's not true. Drew and I never cop up friend info. Which details do mom and dad want? That the bully who called Drew and his friend Samir midget and armrests last semester tossed their backpacks in the trash? That my supposed best friend calls me names and punches me? Or that I put up with it because I don't have any other close friend? Parents always think they want details, but they're better off not knowing. That's the truth. I've been thinking, dad says. Oi, whenever dad says he's been thinking, he comes up with a terrible idea. How about a football theme for Drew's bar mitzvah reception? Every table could be a different team. What are you talking about, Mom asks, her voice rising. I've already ordered centerpieces and t-shirts. The theme is movies. Calm down for Pete's sake, it was just a suggestion. I hate football, Drew says quietly. Or maybe he just seems quiet compared to my parents. Maybe you wouldn't hate it if you tried it, Dad says. The next time Abby and I are tossing a football, you should- Drew has hundreds of followers on YouTube for his short films, I butt in. Steven Spielberg got started with short films, Mom says, so there you go. And I know for a fact he never played football, I declare with authority. I have no idea if Steven Spielberg played football or not. Drew shoots me a grateful look. My party theme was supposed to be horror movies, but forget about what I want for my own bar mitzvah. Andrew, Mom says, I cannot have the rabbi and his wife sitting at the Texas Chainsaw Massacre table. They're sitting with us at the Star Wars table. Lame, I say. I'd much rather sit at the Texas chains on the soccer table. I pick up my knife and wave it around like an electric saw. <laughs> Mom rubs her temple. Abby, we're at the dinner table. Wait for it, wait for it. This is not the Abby show. There it is. Please put your leg down. I take my foot off my chair. I always forget I'm doing that. Did you come up with a system to help you remember to take your pill every morning? Mom asks, like we talked about with Dr. C. Yep, I answer. I wrote take your meds on my bathroom mirror in lipstick, so I can't miss it when I'm brushing my teeth. Good idea, right? Personally, I think it's brilliant. Mom puts her fork down. You used my lipstick without asking? Please tell me it wasn't the Chanel one. Was it the Chanel one? I don't know, it was red. To change the subject, I slide down the bowl of quinoa toward Drew. Want some dirt? It looks delicious. Drew sneeze laughs, sending chunks of mashed potatoes shooting out of his mouth. A blob lands on Dad's chin. Drew and I lose it laughing. Something funny, you two, asks Dad. I'm about to say, yeah, it's snowing on your face, but Dad holds up his finger warning me. Watch your mouth. That's physically impossible, I giggle. Unless you're standing in front of a mirror or using a phone cam, Drew adds. I have unusually large lips, I say with a French accent. I reach for the salt and accidentally knock over my water, then try to wipe it off with a napkin. Drew and I can't stop giggling. The sight of Dad's face makes me go into hysterics. I jerk forward, doubling over in a wave of uncontrollable laughter, and BAM! My forehead hits the corner of the table. I sit up, dazed. They're all staring at me, goggle-eyed. Drew speaks first. Kermit the Frog's eye is popping out of your head. I rub the spot that I made contact with the table. It's the size of a ping-pong ball. Don't move, Mom says slowly, using her I have everything under control voice. I'll get an ice pack. Drew rushes off without asking to be excused. Mom gives me a boo-boo buddy, an ice pack in the shape of a little pig we keep stashed in the freezer. I place the cold piggy lightly on the top of my bump. It's throbbing, but it only hurts when I press it. She doesn't have to go to the emergency room, Drew says, sitting back down, his video camera in hand. I looked it up. She needs ice and Tylenol. The swelling will go down on its own. It's called a goose egg. He takes a bite of chicken like nothing happened, then points his camera at me. I roll my eyes up to my head and stick on my tongue out. Abby knows all about goose eggs, Mom says, putting a Tylenol pill in front of me. I swallow it with that water. She whopped herself in the head all the time as a toddler. Mystery solved, Drew says. I pinch him. Ow! He yells. 
That's enough, Dad says, his jaw twitching. Give me your phone, Abby. But I'm wounded, please, Dad. Dad's hand swoops across the table and snatches my phone. He slides into his shirt pocket. You'll get it back when you learn how to behave at the table. You got hurt because you were fooling around. You have to be more careful. Dad takes Drew's camera away too. Dinner is pretty much quiet after that. Later, I'm up in my room reading Entertainment Weekly when there's a knock on my door. I'm not playing Xbox, I say. Drew probably wants to play Clash of Zombies. The door opens. It's mom and dad. Why are they in my room? Did my teacher call? I interrupted him in class today, but he didn't get mad, I swear. He did call, dad says. I knew Tommy was too good to be true. But just to introduce himself. Is it true he lets you call him by his first name? I nod, relieved I'm not in trouble. Hmm. Well, Tony told us to email him at any time. I might do that. Please don't. Mom sits next to me and lifts the boo-boo buddy peering at my forehead. Much better. So that's why you guys are here, I ask, to let me know my teacher called to say hi? That, Mom says, and to say good job on keeping up with your English homework this week, Mom says, we checked online. So that's what this visit is about, to show me that they're going to be hands-on from now, emailing Tony and cyber spying on me. I curse whoever invented the internet. Okay, well, if there isn't anything else, I'm just waiting for my concussion to set in, so I get back to my magazine. Mom takes it out of my hands. You don't have a concussion, poo poo poo. I'm not sure what this poo 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 superstition is all about, but Jewish women say it constantly. Basically, it's a reminder not to get too excited about good luck, because some jealous witches out there could be saying, I'll get you, my pretty, and drop a house on you. Unless, of course, you say poo 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 to prevent this from happening. I want to remind you of the things Dr. C talked about, Mom says. Are you going to remember to take your meds every day and tell us the truth? And control your mouth, Dad puts in. Sure, no problem. Blah, blah, blah. Good. Mom gets up and opens my closet, reviewing my messy heel of clothes and shoes. I'll clean that up tomorrow, I say. She pulls a Forever 21 shopping bag off a high shelf and hands it to me. How long has that been there? What's that? Dad asks, as mystified as me. I open it and pull out a pair of jeans in exactly the right shade of blue, an aqua tank with a red, sparkly star, and red sequined flip-flops. Blue jeans, not too light, not too dark. Like you said, Mom says. The star is because you want to be a star. I can return everything if you don't like it. No, 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 I love it all. I hug her carefully with one arm, holding the clothes in the other. Why is she doing this? Thank you, but I thought you liked me better in skirts. I do, but you like jeans. She kisses the top of my head. I can't get over it. After everything I've put my parents through, I'm getting presents. It doesn't add up. But since they're suddenly so happy with me, I ask dad, can I get my phone back now? Let's not get crazy, he says. He doesn't seem as happy about the outfit. How about tomorrow, I ask him. We'll see, mom answers for him. It's nine o'clock. Oh, come on, it's the weekend, I say. The best shows start now. I was just about to come downstairs. But they turn off the lights and leave, closing the door behind them. I'm not even in my PJs yet. This early bedtime is ridiculous. Being grounded is ridiculous. I hear dad as they go downstairs. A gift? You should have discussed it with me first, especially after her behavior at dinner. It's motivation, Mom answers. We had a heavy session at the doctor's. Abby needs an incentive. She won't make any progress without rewards. I won't make any progress without rewards? Really? This outfit is a dog biscuit. Mom thinks I can't get my act together by myself. She doesn't think I can get through summer school without messing up or that I can't be trusted again or remember my meds or get anything right unless she throws me a bone. Woof. I guess Tony did the same thing with the stand-up comedy reward. More dog bone giving. They have the same doubts I do, that I can't change on my own. My parents think they're always right about everything, and I don't want to encourage that. But, and it hurts to admit it, incentives will probably work for me. At the same time, what my parents and Tony don't understand is, deep down, I'm starting to want to change, and not just to get a reward. Then again, getting these new clothes doesn't stink. I try everything on. I'll be wearing this new outfit when I do my STEM comedy, for sure. So everyone, thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to come back on Tuesday to find out what happens to Abby next time. Bye.